Good morning, everyone. It's Trackman44. You know, I know y'all know that uh, we do our own butchering. We butcher our own beef and our own pork and everything, you know. For years and years and years, uh, the majority of our knives are all homemade butcher knives that, that our dad made, you know, starting way back probably in the, in the 30s or 40s. And he made them out of crosscut saw blade. And one of these days, if I think about it, I might dig out one or two and kind of give y'all an idea. But he's made all our skin and knives, you know, for skin and beef and all that. And, of course, kitchen knives, steak knives. But his forte was actual, uh, actual butcher knives. But uh, I'm going to break tradition. My son bought a knife on, uh, on the Internet, and it turned out to be a really good knife. It had uh, held an edge very, very good. And uh, we got to looking, and I put my wife on to it, you know, to see if she could find me one, just because I was totally impressed. We didn't have to sharpen his knife at all the entire day uh, butchering them hogs. And uh, that's pretty much unheard of, you know, with our old homemade knives. Even though they're made out of good metal, they just don't hold the edge like, like some of this good, uh, this good steel. We found out what the Rockwell hardness number was on his knife, and his was a 5960. And we found a very similar, or my wife found a very similar uh, knife blank that she could purchase fairly cheap that has a basic grind on it, but it doesn't have the, uh, you know, the edge or anything like that. So we've got to do that ourselves. And then, of course, put, your own, put our own handles on course you can use any kind of material you want for the handles. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you what, what I'm going to do. We bought two of them. My son-in-law, he's actually a shop teacher because his knife's going to turn out just absolutely wonderful. There's no doubt about it. And mine's going to be a hodgepodge. You know, it's, it'll be a function over farm, you know what I mean? Because I don't have the technical ability to do all the stuff with wood that he does. But at any rate, now I'm going to show you a little bit what uh, what we're starting out with. Not uh, really a butcher knife at all. This is actually a, uh, a fillet knife. But a fillet knife is what we really prefer uh, whenever we're trimming on the bones. Because this is a Rockwell hardness of uh, 59 to 60, uh, it's going to take a little bit of work uh, to work that down. And so what I'm starting off here is a 180 and a 360 grit uh, diamond, cheap diamond hone. Now I'm not going to tell you anything about what to do because once you start telling uh, that this is the way to do something when it comes to sharpening knives or sharpening chainsaws, sharpening axes, uh, you get your throat cut, you know what I mean? So uh, this is not how you do it, it's how I'm going to do it. So uh, what I do essentially is I just work it down, or I'm going to work it down, um, and I'm going to continue doing this back and forth, back and forth, until I get the desired thickness and the desired sharpness that I want. And then uh, that's the 180, then I'll finish up with the 320, and then I'm going to go to another fancy little thing I've got on my drill press, and uh, it's a rotary, it's a rotary uh, wheel, and then after that, we'll go about the business of buffing it with a buffing wheel on a, a pneumatic die grinder. You know, a wise man once told me uh, that, uh, there ain't nothing like an uncluttered shop. Well, let me tell you something. This is nothing like an uncluttered shop. But you know what? I don't really care. This is that fancy thing I was telling you about. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maintain about a 15 degree angle. Again, I ain't telling you what to do. This is a very pliable disc, and it's made for sharpening virtually uh, just about anything that you can figure out how to, to hold to run across there. You kind of got the idea, so I'll go about the business of thinning this down. Then I'll go back to doing it by hand with the uh, aluminum oxide stone, see what I come up with. Now I've got a real good wire edge on it. By real good, I mean it's a pretty severe wire edge. Whenever you, uh, in my experience, whenever you're sharpening axes and and uh, and homemade butcher knives and everything, as you sharpen them, you know you're sharpening one side, you're moving the material, and it actually creates a wire edge onto the other side. That's why you'll sharpen with a stone, and then you'll touch it up with a uh, with a steel to knock that wire edge off. Now, literally just a few minutes of of service on that wheel. And you can see right here what's happening already. Now the big test with this, uh, with this uh, 50, 5960 Rockwell hardness is to see how long it's going to hold that edge. And if you can get it to curl like this, the full length from all the way up here by the hilt all the way down to the very, very much down to the tip. So for, for three minutes worth of work, after you know an hour or so of honing with the diamonds, I'm actually kind of uh, kind of happy with that.
This is not knife making 101. I have no idea what's going to happen, how this is going to turn out. But what I did, I took a little piece of scrap walnut, you know, from the wood pile. I took a jigsaw and just sawed right down the middle of it because I figured that jigsaw would take about a curve about the, uh, the thickness of my blade. And then I just went ahead and drilled uh, 5 30 second holes in a line with, with the uh, holes in the handle. And now what I'm going to do, I've got that handle traced on this piece of walnut. And before I cut those off in individuals, I'm going to grind these down on the belt sander to where both sides will be reasonably close to identical. Then what's going to happen because of the irregularities be with the jigsaw cutting through the center, that's going to become the outside. I'm going to put this side on that side, that side on this side, then the good uh, nice planed surfaces and now sanded surfaces will be on the center and then the rough cut outside irregular edges will be on the outside. Then I can trim those up once it's on the, uh, on the knife blank. Again, this ain't no how-to video. This is just, uh, God only knows what this is going to work out and look like anyway, you know. Okay, we've got a preliminary start. This is where the handle is actually going to start right there. But we have a preliminary start at getting that in the shape that I'm going to want that. And then of course we have to work it down to fit the grip of the person that's going to use it. And that person's going to be me. Okay, now I missed a few steps in between, but uh, we took a little bit of brass stock and then made some 5 30 seconds rivets a little bit longer than what the width of the handle is. My son-in-law um, was making his and, and he said he had used some epoxy, had some epoxy left over. So he hurried up quick and come up and brought up that epoxy. We went ahead and epoxied that together. I've currently got it in the clamps right now and I've got the rivets poked back in. So uh, I did miss a couple of steps, but that's essentially where we're at right now. So uh, we'll get back to it once this epoxy cures up and we go about the business of sanding all the remnants of the epoxy off and actually shaping the handle. Now, you know, we've been, we've been working on making this knife, uh, had the handles all roughed out and everything. I went ahead and fired up the camera and started sanding everything down by hand because virtually everything is done by hand on this once you get the uh, the rivets and everything worked down. Uh, but doggone, my SD card filled up <laughs> and I didn't know it. So I missed the lion's share of the hand sanding. So for that, I apologize. But it really ain't any big deal. You just uh, do whatever you got to to hold it correctly and then just use a series of, of different grit sandpaper in order to shape the handle in the fashion in which you want it to fit your hand. I'm just rounding this off a little bit the back side because I just like that rounded feel just a little bit better than what I had there. But you'd be surprised how quickly this goes. It does not take all that long at all. If you notice I'm missing one rivet here. Here's the two here. I've got to get a, uh, a little bit more epoxy and put me a dribble of epoxy down in that hole and then reinstall that rivet. I used lineup punches to align these. I used the three pin punches and uh, what happened is I pulled the pin punches out when the, before the epoxy totally settled up. Pulled out the pin punch, put in a rivet, pulled out pin punch, put in a rivet. By the time I got the third pin punch pulled out, the epoxy was already too far gone and it didn't hold secure enough that third pin. It's only a mistake if it can't be fixed. What this is, this is, um, what this is, this is a little scrap of walnut off of a project that I've not put the videos up yet uh, far, but it's just a little scrap piece. But like I say, I'll have to epoxy that third brass rivet in there yet. I've still got a little bit of finished sanding under here, get that radius, this radius here just a little bit more smooth, and then uh, do the final finish sanding with 420 or 500. Thought I would cheat a little bit there, work that down a little bit, then I'll go back and finish hand sanding that. Considering there's no finish on it, I think that's starting to look pretty decently. 
There's that little flinched off part of that walnut when I drove that rivet through. That's my mistake, but uh, that's not too bad. This here is still a little bit of hand required under here yet. Okay, so I'm a little impatient. I went and got some Danish oil and put that Danish oil finish onto that bare walnut. That's not a stain, that's just the uh, Danish oil. Well, I stepped up to the daughter's house, you know, to uh, talk to the son-in-law about his knife. You know, I knew he had his completely done. And he decided to make his out of curly maple. Right out of our uh, heating wood pile, he pulled a piece of curly maple. And, of course, his is completely done. And he's got his uh, riveted, rivets completely sealed in place with the epoxy. My rivet, uh, I got it in a little bit too late. The epoxy was already set up. And so as I was working with it, it worked its way all the way back out. So that's no big deal. I have to re-epoxy that. And then mine's made out of walnut. So those are two contrasting pieces of wood. And you can see, obviously, the, the nice curly maple. And what that curly maple does in a handle. And then this is walnut. Just plain black walnut. And you can you notice, the first thing you notice is the thicknesses, the thickness difference. Uh, I just used scrap wood off a project I just completed. So my wood was really, really thin. And he could cut his at any dimension. Of course his, if it's too thick, which I don't think it's going to be, all he's got to do is work it down just a little bit more on the belt sander and uh, thin it down. I think the optimum uh, for my hand is going to be a little bit thicker than the one that I made and just a little bit thinner than the one that he made. We're, uh, we're, we're both happy with it. Can't wait to butcher beef on the 29th to uh, see how well they do. Now again, these knives are, they're butcher knives, but they're not necessarily butcher knives. It's a five and a half inch blade, but uh, these are gonna be actual tr uh, trimming knives. If it's a knife, it's made to cut something, you can use it for whatever, you know, but uh, we're making these specifically for trimming, trimming beef, beef and trimming pork. There's a nice comparison between different kinds of wood. The curly maple, which is of course the, the lighter color, and then of course the, the black walnut. So, hey, you know what? This track man 44, and I am out of here. So even though the video is done, here's just a, just a few seconds of an addendum. Uh, I've been kind of getting bad about that. But anyway, I told you I would show you the finished project, and uh, I've had the opportunity to, uh, since I finished the video to get that last pin installed in there. So you can see the pin is installed, and I've got the, uh, the final finish on it. Uh, a few seconds ago in the video, you saw there was a little discoloring. That's because I I had it at my daughter's house, and she used it. Her hands was wet, and she used it to cut a little bit of meat just to see how well it cut. And so uh, you would rinse it off and everything, and it hadn't fully dried. But uh, that's why it had that little discoloring in the handle, if you notice that. But uh, you can see now it's completely done. I've uh, ground the epoxy back down. I sanded it down smooth, uh, finished fan sanded and everything. I've got this angle completely done and, and shaved out. It's uh, looking fairly nice. And then, of course, I've got the uh, the Danish oil finish completely on it. So there is a completed project. It fits my hand really, really well. And like I say, we're getting ready to cut up those beef this Saturday. So just in time. So anyway, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.